eyes down for the other one. Morning folks, Monday, and on with the motor plate, but first, as promised, I'm going to reverse this uh, Rapido to put it back to go into the direction it used to go in. I've also noticed I've got a bit of a bump, 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 probably on the big end. But that's just a matter of replacing a bush or a bearing or something. It's nothing much. Or even a pin. Right, let's be on. Let's swap it over in the plug. Easiest place to swap it over. I'll bring you back when I've done it. Job done. Let's try it now. Oh, works better if you turn it on. It's now going the correct way. Or at least, it's going the way it was before. There you go. There you go. Right. First time I saw with it, I shall test, I shall listen carefully to it and see if it's uh, doing the lift. What it does is, as the, because of the geometry of it, as it goes on the forward stroke, it lifts the ramp. And then when it reverses, the ram delays the saw blade falling back again. So effectively it holds the saw out of the cut until the ram goes forward again. Clever stuff. Right, let's get back to the job in hand. The motor plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this very slightly. So that that plate fits just below there and then I'm going to square one up, tack weld it on and then get the other squared up so that the slide works and everything is square and go for it. Having said that it is actually terrifically square anyway. But there you go. I do like to get it right when I can. It's not often. Onward. So I thought before I started welding, I would clean up my welding mask because I haven't serviced it for a bit. And, uh, it's getting a bit cloudy and a bit difficult to see through. So I was polishing the muck off the outer lens and guess what? Not much wonder I couldn't see through it really because I'd left the bloody film on. When you put new lenses in, make sure you take the film off. It really does help seeing, especially when you get to my age and your eyes are not what they used to be. Bye now. Amazing. My welding has improved 100% because I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> what an idiot. Bye now. Here we go, folks. Size down for the second tack. You will not believe the messing about what I'm about to do is to get these two opposite each other correct. So let's just do it. My God, I can see so clearly through this helmet. It's unbelievable. And I'll we'll just put one in the knees there. Excellent. Run around the back at this side. 
I'm in the way, I know. Never mind. That's not so neat that I was stretched there. Right. Job done. Beautiful. Right, that's that tax on folks. Thank goodness for that. Well, I'll be playing sailing from here on in, he said, confidently. Super clear mask. Here we go folks, offering the motor up for the first time, that wooden block just gets the motor to the right height, the uh, hydraulic platform is maxed out, so it looks like I'm going to be able to bolt it up and then I'm going to have to find a belt to hold it in position in its outermost position. So onward. Well folks, there it is. All mounted up with a belt on and working. I'm tempted to put the starter on now and just start the motor, but I need to be able to do that to start the motor because it won't. It, I don't think it's starting the load for a minute uh, because it's only single phase. So when I put the weight on the motor, it does tension this belt slightly, but. I don't think it's anything anything much to write home about. There is a bit of movement on that pin there, which I really don't know why, because it was a very good fit in the uh, in the tube. Maybe I've picked the wrong pin up. Maybe I've picked the wrong pin. That pin does look a bit small. I might have a bigger pin that will make it take that up. But anyway, there it is, and I've managed to find a very worn out belt, which would actually drive it. But We'll have to see. I'll see if I can rig it up and get a turn over it. And that's working very well. It doesn't, uh, this still works. When you slacken this off, it still loosens it. So the relationship between that angle and that angle must be about right. So when you go back again, it tightens up. So it's not putting much weight onto there. So what we could do with this some sort of spring loading here and then a lever that will do that but we need a longer belt because that belt won't fit on the bigger pulley it's too small so there's no way I'll be able to see a size on this uh, I don't think no it's old it's old old oh hang on just a minute Yes, there is. Yes, there is a size on it. So, I can suss out what belt on. This is a good belt. This is a cracking belt. It's too short. It's brand new and it's too short. And that's a 47. That's an A, a section 47. So, I should think probably an A section 50 would do it. I'll take this one off and have a look, see what I can read on it. But there we go, motor mounted. Oh. Right folks, the motor's on and it's running and it's noisy but that may, it, it sounds partly like electrical noise, uh, it's partly vibrating here and it's also running the wrong way, right? It needs reversing, no big deal. But, look at that, even though it's going backwards, Now that's not, that's not driving full speed because I've got the, uh, I've got the boat set to slip, but it's 
dragging too much. The problem is the hydraulic platform loses height and uh, that means it's putting more tension on the belt than it should be. You know? There we are. Yes, it's that, uh, it's the motor plate that's the motor plate that's uh, buzzing. It wants some it wants some springs on it, but there she is. As Mr. Rolls Royce said, what's the matter? Won't she start? She's running. For the first time in a long time, I would imagine. But there you go. Obviously, the wrong way. Never mind. Oh dear. Right. Time has beat me. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks, Tuesday, or should I say afternoon. Lovely isn't it? Well it wasn't this morning, it was cold and pouring with rain. And so, because of that, I fitted an extra job in. I put the pump back on, put a new pump on, pump head on and pump the water back in to the tank and uh, refilled it and bled it so it's ready to go because I thought I'm going to turn up there one day and it's going to be cold and I'm going to want to light the fire and I won't be able to so now it's fixed it's bled and it's all done and then the sun comes out typical right the whole brook what I've decided to do here is to make two pillars to bolt onto these bolts either side with a round bar on the end like that with a rubber tube pushed over it right so that it stops against there on both sides at the point where that will just go around right and hold it there with springs and that will be my innermost position and at that position, I want the belt not to be driving. So I can't really suss out the length of a belt until I get that done. So that's going to be the next job. And I've decided already I'm, that I've put the wrong pin in here. I'm going to make another pin for there to make it fit properly. Oh, right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do first. I'm going to reverse the motor. Reverse the motor. Which means taking the cover plate off and swapping... Uh, it will be, I don't know what it will be. It'll be, it's the, it's the polarity of the start winding you change, but I, it depends what, what it's marked at in this type of motor. It's usually Z1 and Z2, but also sometimes it's, uh, they use U, V and W or something like that, you know, and it's, and it's W1 and W2 that you swap. Uh, I've never been able to understand why. I, I understand that the UVW is more or less a European. I've also wondered about turning the motor end caps so that the oilers are up. Which I can do at the other end, but I don't think I can do at this end because of the wiring. But when I get that cover off, I'll be able to have a look and tell you. So, let's get on with it. Right folks, we're in. I've just tested, this was the one that was connected to Z and that was connected to AZ so I've just tested these two and they're a winding and those two up there are a winding so that's the run winding, this is the start winding I need to put that one onto there and I need to put that one onto there and that will reverse the motor but I've looked inside this motor and it's filthy and I'm going to drop this end cover off and just service the centrifugal switch because it's covered in grease and muck and all sorts of grot and I really don't like the look of it so I'm going to, it gives a big flash every time it 
opens and closes so I'm just going to clean all the grease off it and service it so I'll bring you back when the end caps off and there we go people covered in tiny bits of swarf and the same in the motor so not too bad I can wash this out I can scrape the swarf out I can blow it out yeah that's very greased up as well very greased up I've got some 100% alcohol so I can clean that out with 100% alcohol and uh, get it back to what it should be of course I can at this stage tap the other end off and drop the rotor out I might do that because then I can change the I can turn the oil around I don't think I can turn the oil around at this side because I don't think the wires will be long enough if I turn the oil around that would put the oil there no there would probably be a way of doing it but never mind right let's get cleaning but first let's have a cup of tea rotor out rotor back in again all clean and uh, ready for reassembly now I am going to have that cup of tea I promised myself and then we'll put it back together and test it there's the centrifugal switch mechanism all uh, clean and uh, degreased and the points can you see the points in there the points cleaned ready to go again for another 50 odd years these motors last forever provided you don't abuse them right tea time there we go folks motor rebuild and the lock quieter and also no flash from the centrifugal switch and it's running the right way good show how nice right onward let's see about these two stops and uh, see what we can build let's do it right folks a couple of rubber stops solid steel that's the rubber bit so they come up against the box section and they stop the motor from stopping that so when they're against the box section this still operates which is good uh, I've been looking at this 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 motors heavy which is why I didn't want to use it but it's one horsepower and it need probably needs a horsepower uh, so it's now a matter of finding some springs strong enough to hold the motor up with those in contact with the box section but also to have enough travel on them for me to push a lever down or backwards to pull the motor back against and tighten the belt and uh, and put the machine into drive so is it possible with springs or will it need a mechanical linkage it might need a mechanical linkage but I've got plenty of pivot points let's have a look let's experiment I'll bring you back when I've got some more to show you right I can use those two motor bolts there to secure a round bar a small round bar between them uh, to give me a place to fix the springs to because I'm not too keen on drilling holes in the edge of this because it's aluminium All right, so that will give me a nice spring fixing point and I can then just pop a bar across here stick it on with some mole grips and see 
if the idea has got potential or not. But for today, time has beaten me. It's home time. And because I live there, I'm going. Please with the rubber stops though. Something's... I'm wondering whether I might not be better off with a mechanical linkage. Something where you push a lever down here. It would need it would need to be amplifying, it would need to uh, yeah it would need amplifying because you would need an easy push there to pull that motor and that motor is quite heavy to pull at that angle. I shall think about it overnight, I shall have a cogitate. Okay folks that's Tuesday and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks, Wednesday afternoon, it's 1.30. I've had a tidy up and because I was struggling working behind here, I've had a big tidy up round here as well so I can get round the back of it. I've also been up at Keith giving him some moral support because his wife's in for surgery today and uh, he has all the dogs to do by himself and he's not very happy about it because he doesn't really know what he's doing. But we managed. So I'm back here now and we're off to crack on. We're off to crack on. So what I was doing was making somewhere in between those two bolts to fix the springs to. Which is going to be a piece of this rod with two eyelets bent in it. So I'll crack on with that and I'll bring you back. I might even show you doing it. Okay, let's get your suspender. Let it blow on. There we go, job done. Just saw that off there now, a couple of washers, and we've got a fixing for the springs. Right folks, two springs on there. Anchored that, that bar I've bolted onto those two bolts, and that does it. It's now held against the bump stops. I mean, it's been limited by this at the moment. I put that on just to stop it flopping down. That's sort of like a safety strap. I will have a safety strap on there in case something fails so that it can't just drop. But that's looking good. So if I can get if I can get to a point where uh, that's not driving and that is driving then we're looking good. Unfortunately now I haven't got a long enough fee belt but I can pick one of those up tomorrow. The next thing to do of course is to look at if we actually slid that if we slid that pivot point up this is just a temporary if we slid that up it would increase the pressure on the on the springs and and we have two potential fixings there which we could use to hold that on to bolt it on that looks good to me that's probably what I'll do I might use 
Oh no, it's not. It's not that that bar might be slightly bending, but it is the right diameter for the spring eyes. So I might carry on using that. And of course, of course, I can put another spring on should I want to increase the pressure. Uh, yeah, this is beginning to. It's beginning to take shape. I'm still. I'm still studying about what I shall do to have some sort of a lever here to uh, to push it into drive plus the fact we've got to also be able to push it into drive regardless of which pulley it's on and that's going to make quite a lot of difference that's going to make quite a lot of difference yeah I'm committing it to the grey matter computer and hoping that it comes up with something Let's wait and see. <laughs> right folks, I've been doing some careful measuring up and some working out. And I've measured the lengths of the belts. If they were fully tight belts. Right? And I'm now going to go and see my belt man and ask his advice. Because he used to work for Fenners of Hull. And he's a whiz with belts and drives. So I'm going to ask his advice. I've got it all drawn out over here. On a piece of paper with all the dimensions on. I'm going to go and ask his advice now. So that's it for today. Uh, I've shuffled forward a little bit. And I'm thinking along the lines of... To make up for the difference between that pulley and that pulley, we can move the motor a little bit and possibly to start and stop the whole lathe we can have a jockey pulley here. But I'm going to see what he suggests. I'm going to see what he suggests. This rotates forwards so that's the drive line, that's the slack line. So the jockey pulley would have to be would have to be up there, wouldn't it? If that rotates forwards. That's the drive line. That's the drive line. That'll be the slack line. So the jockey pulley would have to be up there. Not so easy. Or maybe just as hard to put it anywhere really. Uh, I don't know. I'll see what he says. Right, that's it for today. I have to get the ladders. So we have shuffled forward a little bit. I've got the motor spring loading set and I've got the rubber stop set. And that's worked. And I've had a good tidy up. So not a lot achieved, but onward. See you tomorrow. Morning, folks. Thursday. And I'm a bit breathless, because I've just had a mad hour tidying up. I went to my V-belt man this morning, and unfortunately, he's told me that he's stopped stocking V-belts. And he only has the remains of his stock, because they were taking 25% of his storage space, and only providing 2% of his turnover. And that is a no-brainer. So... I got a belt, which is too short, which we almost knew it would be, but we thought we might just give it a try. So, I've again been through all of my V-belt collection, just in case any of them that I wrote off as small V-belts were larger V-belts doubled over, but they weren't. And uh, I've decided I'm going to have to source some online. Uh, they were a little bit more expensive than he was, but never mind. So we're going to have a look online, see if we can get some belts. In the meantime, the reason I'm breathless is because I've started the outside tidy up. Right? I started the other day and I just took that bit out there. As far as that soil goes, you can see all this grass has to come out. And I need to cut this grass again. 
this got on top of me when I was ill and I couldn't do it anymore. But what I've done for the first bit is cleared that down there. The next job is to cut this grass. Pull all these weeds out, cut the brambles back because they've finished flowering, they've finished fruiting now. Cut the brambles back, cut all this grass back. Michael's coming to move the van and I'm going to cut all that. Although that's got that's got butterflies in it, so I'll probably leave them until they've gone. Right? Michael should cut that really, but he's a naughty boy. He doesn't ever look after his property. He's busy, I suppose. Right. Onward. If anybody wants a nice van, just gone through its MOT. Surplus to requirements now is he's got a new van which goes all over the country. Uh, that one will be for sale when he takes it away eventually. But I've got all this mess to clear up. Won't take long. I'm going to get the big streamer from up at Keith's and use that. I would, I would blag Keith, but he's he's a little bit taken up with Angela at the moment because she's getting out of hospital today. Her operation was a success. She's out today with a new type of defibrillator fitted which synchronises both sides of her heart to beat in unison which they've never done before or at least not in unison one after the other I think uh, so they've told her she should be better than she's ever been because her heart's not been beating properly for years and years and years and she had the best defibbing that there was but now of course that's been superseded by a newer one which is a three wire model instead of a two wire whether it's got OBD, I don't know, but uh, they monitor it remotely. It operates via a modem that she connects to when she walks past it, and they monitor her heartbeat, and they can tweak it remotely as well. Isn't that amazing? So she's really remote controlled. Right, I'm going to have a cup of tea now because I'm absolutely bloody knackered. I mustn't forget that I'm a little bit out of condition since my high blood pressure and diabetes scary wobble. And so I just need to uh, relax a bit now. So I'll bring you back when I've got my breath back. Afternoon folks, Friday. And we've got a belt, or at least we've got a couple of belts. So this one is the larger of the two and it will slip but it's not necessarily particularly good at it now I have found in my research to V-belts that you can get a V-belt which is this is a rubber side you can get one which is a textile coated side which is designed to slip on all but a full wrap and I may eventually go for one of them. But for now, I've got two belts, which are a, a 53 and a 54 inch, which will do the job, subject to jockey pulleys. But I've got a problem with this pin, right? So I'm going to have to address that. So what I'm going to do next is strip this down, drop the motor back, take this pin out, and sort out what's wrong with this pin, and take that that slack that shouldn't be there, that I'm sure wasn't there before, out. And I think it's all down to the fact that I've put the wrong pin back in. But never mind. So I'll get on with that now and I'll bring you back when I have something to show you. But for now, it works. It's a bit noisy till I uh, put some tension on the belt. But then it works perfectly. And it's also quiet. This belt's running out of line at the moment, so it's making a bit of noise, but there you go. Click clock. It's coming on. And what is this, I hear you ask? Well, this is what we used to call, in our motorcycle days, a bodger's reamer. It's a piece of round bar with a slot cut in the end with a hacksaw and a piece of emery tape threaded into the slot and wrapped around it and very useful for cleaning out holes and 
decarbonising and uh, gas flowing, race tuning, polishing, right? But in this case, I've been using it because the tube I've used for this is actually seam welded tube and the seam weld sticks out inside and that's why I couldn't get the right size pin to fit. So it's a 15mm hole and I've got a 15mm pin but the 15mm pin won't go in. So what I've done is I've cleaned up the 15mm pin and lightly emery taped it and then I started to work on the inside of the holes with the Bodger's reamer and uh, I've now got the pin uh, to fit beautifully uh, and it's taken all that play out and the result is it's much much quieter if I just tension that there that uh, frame isn't rattling anymore and that's running really nice so there you go what? something yeah, that's just on there. But that runs, uh, that runs really quietly. I've got a shot. Yeah, that's. Don't know what that is. I'll sort that out. Anyway, there we are. Holbrook running and making silly noises. I can't bear noises. And I've noticed as well that as the, uh, when you stop it, as the centrifugal switch drops out, it appears to uh, break the motor very suddenly, as though the, uh, as though the start winding is, uh, when it comes back in, is, is, is having a braking effect on the motor. Now whether that's wired to be like that or not, I don't know, but it's something I've never come across before, although it's a very common motor. It's an ordinary Compton Parkinson motor, but it does appear to have a back EMF effect and uh, and slow the rotor down very quickly, which is good. This is this is troublesome. Uh, my investigations with V belts from my friend at Spellgate has told me that there is a V belt which has a fabric wrap on it which means that instead of being sort of sticky on the sides it's actually slippery and when it's not well wrapped around the pulley it slips unfortunately I haven't got those I've just got an ordinary couple of V-belts to try it out with now this one's a 53 and needs very little tension to tension it the other one I've got is a 54, which if anything is too long, but would take a jockey pulley. So, I'm at the point of thinking, do I need a clutch? It would be nice to have a clutch. It would be nice to put it out of gear without having the, uh, to stop the motor. Although, the motor appears to be coping very well with starting the whole machine. In, even in even when it's in back gear, uh, it starts it easily. So I'm going to have a think about it over the weekend and see if I can come up with a, a way of uh, making that work. A think, right, folks? That's it. Time has beaten us again. It's Friday evening, and I'm going home. So, thank you all for watching. Thank you for all the new subscribers. All the new subscribers, welcome aboard, people. Check that your subscriptions worked, because YouTube has got this fabulous habit of dropping new subscribers or dropping subscribers. And I noticed that it goes up and down like a fiddler's elbow. And then people, people messaged me and said, I haven't, I haven't seen one of your videos for ages, have you stopped making them? And I say, no, they're out every week. And then I find out that they've been unsubscribed. Don't ask me how. So, welcome aboard to you all. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching everybody. And I'll see you all again next week. 
for more Holbrook fun and games. I want to get this finished. Because A, I want to play with it, and B, I want to get on with something else. I want to get through all these little jobs. I think the next thing I'm going to tackle, which is what I've been saying for ages, is that bloody machine hacksaw. Let's get that out and get rid of it. Okay, folks. The workshop's a mess. Bye now.